Now, on the sensor itself, if we can imagine all these pixels that we would have, and these, these are the micro lenses over all the pixels, a good analogy for understanding how the pixels work is imagine the pixels as buckets of light collecting rainwater. Okay? So in this first case, we have a bunch of light coming in, and we're going to get our bucket. There we go. And we're going to fill our bucket with light. All right? When we fill that bucket all the way up, the camera knows that it's a white pixel because the bucket is completely filled up. The sensor is fully exposed to light. In the next scenario, we'll imagine a smaller amount of light coming in. And it fills up the bucket about halfway. And that is going to be a gray pixel. And we're forgetting about color. Just think about white to black. And so the bucket's half full. That's going to be a gray pixel. The next bucket is just going to have a little bit of light coming in it, a little bit of rain coming in. And we get a dark pixel because that pixel doesn't have very much information in it. That bucket doesn't have very much light in it, very much rain in it in this case. All right, next scenario. You point your camera directly at the sun, OK? A lot of light. Our cup runneth over, OK? <laughs> what happens with that extra light? Nothing. Uh, it's clipped. We don't capture it. What's whiter than white? There isn't anything. It's just white. And so we've lost this extra information up here, and so we don't get anything out of it. Now, one of the things that we can do is, let's take this and fill it halfway, is how do we know this is gray? Well, because we know where the top of the bucket is, all right? Well, one of the things we can do is we can lie to our camera and say, that's not the top of the bucket. Pretend this is the top of the bucket. And this is kind of like the old TV sets. You guys remember the TV sets that had the brightness knob? You could just turn the brightness up on it and make it brighter. Did it make it brighter in the studio or out where they were filming on location? No, it just made your screen brighter. And that's kind of what we're doing. And it's changing ISO for those of you who know what I'm talking about. All right, so let's take these remaining four buckets. And what we're going to do is going to put in just a little bit of light in each one of these. So it's pretty dark. They're all the same. And what we're going to do in this is we're going to falsify our levels here. And we're going to pretend that this is the top. So what we're doing is we're turning up the brightness on all these sensors. And in theory, they should all be exactly the same. Now, the problem with this is that in our sensor, there is all these electronics running back and forth, because it's all hooked up electronically. And there's a little bit of heat that is generated by this. And there's a little bit of an issue. And it's kind of like in the buckets of water. Imagine a layer of scum at the bottom. Don't you love my analogies? <laughs> OK, so imagine you had to drink water from a bucket that had a scum layer on the bottom. Would you go for a bucket that was a real big bucket of water or just a little bit of water there, down there at the bottom? This is the signal to noise ratio. How much signal versus how much noise. And we like having a lot of signal and not much noise. And over here, we don't have much signal, and the ratio of noise is pretty high. And what that means is that in here, it's not getting a very clean signal. And so if we decide to compare these pixels, which should be identical, they're going to vary a little bit. And this manifests itself in noise. And this is a dark area of a photograph where the pixels really aren't sure what to do, and they've got a little bit of heat and electronics running through them, and you get a, this unclean signal from it. And that's the noise problem when we try to crank up our ISOs too far. And that's why we try to avoid that as much as possible.